From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Steve Miller reporting. The Group of Seven, or G7, summit began Friday on Sicily, the largest Mediterranean island. U.S. President Donald Trump says terrorism and North Korea are top items on the agenda for the leaders' summit. Speaking at the summit, British Prime Minister Theresa May called upon technology companies for their assistance. We want companies to develop tools to identify and remove harmful materials automatically. And in particular, I want to see them report this vile content to the authorities and block the users who spread it. U.S. President Donald Trump also met with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, where the two reaffirmed their commitment against the threats posed by North Korea's ballistic missile and nuclear tests. Trade is another major topic on the minds of Trump's counterparts who have gathered in the resort town of Terramina. In a private meeting with European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker, officials said Trump denounced the German trade surplus as very bad. Manchester, England's Greater Manchester Police Chief Ian Hopkins said there have been an increase in reported hate crimes since the suicide bombing at an Ariana Grande concert in the city that killed 22 people and wounded several others. He said there is no place for discrimination and hatred in Manchester and urged people to report any incidents. Hopkins said he has reached out to faith leaders to try and calm the situation. He also said there have been a lot of progress on the investigations, but much work remains to be done, noting that 12 locations are still being researched. American singer Ariana Grande announced via Twitter that she will return to Manchester for a benefit concert to raise money for the attack victims and their families, but details haven't been solidified. This is VOA. Egypt answered a bloody machine gun attack that killed dozens of Coptic Christians Friday with an airstrike on terror bases in Libya, where the militant Islamic gunmen were believed to be trained. President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi announced the retaliatory action in a televised address hours after mass gunmen attacked a bus carrying Coptic Christians across the desert to a monastery. VOA's Marissa Rieger reports. Egyptian officials said at least 28 people died at the hands of the gunmen and 25 others were wounded. Authorities said up to 10 assailants and three pickup trucks attacked those traveling to a remote monastery in Menya State honoring St. Samuel the Confessor, a 7th century priest. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attack, although it bore hallmarks of Egypt's Islamic State affiliate, which has carried out four attacks on Coptic Christians since December. The United Nations Security Council condemned in the strongest terms what it called a heinous and cowardly terrorist attack. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control says tests are underway to determine the genetic sequence of the Ebola virus behind an outbreak in Central Africa. VOA's Robert Raffel reports. Epidemiologist Dr. Barbara Nust said that scientists are looking for clues for where this particular strain of Ebola originated and how to treat it. The latest Ebola outbreak is in the Northern Democratic Republic of Congo in a remote area near the border with the Central African Republic. The World Health Organization says that as of May 24th, Ebola has killed four and the number of suspected cases stood at 44. The Ebola virus, which causes a type of hemorrhagic fever, killed more than 11,000 people across, across several West African countries in 2014 and 2015. China's planned modern version of its ancient Silk Road may bring more than $1 trillion of infrastructure investment along trading routes that wind through emerging markets in dozens of countries throughout Asia, Africa, and Europe. 
One Belt, One Road trade routes, which stretch from China to London and in Africa, are intended to boost the economies of China and many nations along those routes by making trading easier and cheaper. But so far, these road, rail, telecom, and other projects offer major opportunities for Chinese companies and not so many for outside firms. Human Rights Watch China director Sophie Richardson told VOA it is unclear what impact these large and ambitious projects will have on human rights, but she says there is reason for concern because some of the nations along the Silk Road routes preside over widespread abuses. For updates to these stories and more 24 hours a day, visit voanews.com. In Washington, I'm Steve Miller. That's the latest world news from VOA.